children in the United States is an immigrant or the U.S. born child of immigrants. And many schools are ill-equipped to fill their needs. The aim of tonight's talk is to generate awareness on the struggles Latinx children face while growing up in the United States. We hope that people take our stories to heart and start thinking of ways to help Latinx students in their communities. When I was seven years old, my family went to a McDonald's and I had to give my entire family's order to the cashier because she couldn't understand my dad. Even though he, was, he told her the order over three times, she couldn't understand him through his accent. And so seven-year-old me had to step up. It wouldn't be the last time that I'd need to do something like that. From a young age, I've had to be my family translator. I've had to tell them what's in an, in an important document, as well as help them write an email and tell them what's happening in a doctor's appointment. I moved to the United States when I was just four years old, so being the family translator and explaining everything in this country is nothing new to me. It has taught me to be far more responsible than other kids my age, and I have had worries that other kids don't have to even consider. One example is our mutual friend. From ever since she was 10 years old, she has had to fulfill the mother role in her family. Both of her parents work, and so does her younger brother, who does her older brother, which meant that she couldn't stay after school, even if she needed help with a class or wanted to join a club. She needed to be home to make sure someone was there to pick up her younger brother and to make the food and make sure everything at the house was clean and tidy for her parents. Familism engulfs our everyday life, and we can't navigate spaces the way other kids do. Although we might desperately want to join an extracurricular at our school, such as the band or choir or the cheer team, we can't. Not just because we feel our families can't afford it, but also because from a young age, we're taught that family comes first. In my case, it was a little bit different because it was just my mom and I. My mom really wanted me to focus on extracurriculars and academics because she had to sacrifice not being in her home country for me to have a better life and a better education in the United States. However, I had to make sacrifices too. I had to leave everything I knew behind in Mexico to come to the United States under the impression that I was going to be able to sort out my residency. However, as time went by, I realized that that wasn't the case. I was undocumented throughout middle school and high school. I lived in a predominantly white town, and I lived in fear every day, fear of people finding out and me getting deported. I was scared that my mom's job would get raided out by ICE, and I wouldn't see her when she came back from work. This fear consumed me. I lived in the shadows, and I was living a lie. This kept me from opening up to people or making friends. However, I used extracurriculars and academics as a way to deflect my living situation at home. I really like learning. But when topics about my culture came up at school, I would have to be the one doing the teaching. The curriculum oftentimes did not feed or provide me with ties to my identity. I remember talking about the civil rights movement in my AP US history class. And my teacher talked about Martin Luther King Jr. He talked about the environmentalist movement, the women's liberation movement. He even mentioned the Filipino farmers worker movement, but he failed to talk about Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta. He forgot about me, about my culture, about my family history, and my stepdad's parents who were seasonal farm workers in Michigan during the time of the movement. <sighs> Throughout high school, I felt like that. And in that instance, and many others, 
the education sister neglected me, and my institution did too. As I transitioned from high school to college, I had to find avenues and navigate spaces by myself since of my lack of documents and my mom's low socioeconomic status, I had to find ways to apply to college to take AP tests and a standardized test for free because I simply couldn't afford it. And even then, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to go to college because I didn't meet the DACA requirements. And that would mean that I would have to go back to Mexico and never come back to the United States again or see my mom. However, I was lucky because I had a mentor who went through the same struggles that I did. And she helped me find ways and help so I could take the step and go to college. Because my counselors didn't know about my situation. And by the time I got to high school, I got my residency. So it made it easy for me to go to college my senior year. Similar to Pam, I didn't know if I was going to be able to go to college. I had a visa, but that still meant that if I was accepted into college, I would have to pay international student tuition, and that was something my family just couldn't afford. For me, my only option would have been to go back to Mexico and be away from my family for the first time in my life. To experience a culture and an educational system I had no experience in. I was paying for all the AP classes and took the ACT just like all the other kids in my grade, but I didn't know if there was any point to it because I didn't know if I was even going to be able to go. In the end, though, I was able to obtain my residency and I was able to go to college. Education has always been a huge part of my family. My grandparents only made it to elementary school. My, both of my parents finished college in Mexico. And as I stand on this stage, I'm the first in my family to go to college in the United States. It, education has always been a way to propel my family forward and give us opportunities that generations before us never had. Pam and I. <laughs> Pam and I, Pam and I both ended up choosing Eastern Michigan University and we met through the Latinx Student Association. It helped give us a sense of belonging that we never had in the general education system. It also put us in a position of leadership in the Latinx community because we found ourselves being able to provide that guidance that we lacked in school. Our struggles? made us the women that stand before you tonight. And one in every four children in the United States experienced something similar or far worse. Because of these struggles, immigrants, immigrants are multilingual, they are culturally sensitive, and they are resilient. The United States is a melting pot and always has been. Because of this, immigrants are what make America great. <laughs>